This video reviews diphenhydramine poisoning, otherwise known as Benadryl. I'm Brad Sobolewski from the PEM blog. So diphenhydramine, as you know, is a H1 receptor antagonist, histamine. The normal dose is 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram in kids, and it's used for any variety of illnesses that cause itching like hives or local skin reactions, seasonal allergies, and it can actually be used as a mild sedating agent. The half-life in the body is short, one to four hours, and it's typically dosed every four to six hours as needed. Now the fatal dose is about 20 to 40 milligrams per kilogram, but as little as three to five times the normal dose can cause toxicity. The non-sedating cousins to diphenhydramine, cetirizine, loratadine, fexofenadine, are less toxic, so you got to take more to harm yourself, not that that's recommended. Now the overdose symptoms of diphenhydramine are similar to anticholinergic poisoning. You can see a myriad of symptoms including drowsiness, medriasis, flushed dry skin, fever, tachycardia, delirium, hallucinations, myoclonic or choreoacetoid movements, convulsions, rhabdomyolysis, generally as a result of prolonged convulsions or abnormal motor tone, hyperthermia, and even QRS widening, similar to what you would see in a TCA. The diagnosis of diphenhydramine poisoning is based on H&P. The labs you obtain should certainly include a gas and electrolytes. Consider a CK if the patient has seized or has abnormal motor movements, and definitely get an EKG. Now, if you're worried about other ingestions, it might be a good idea to get acetaminophen, salicylate, and ethanol levels as well. And if your patient is female, a pregnancy test can't hurt. Treatment-wise, well, if the patient is supremely agitated, go ahead and give Ativan or a benzodiazepine to calm them down. Now, physostigmine, dose 0.5 to 1 milligram IV, can be used for severe delirium or tachycardia. So, be cautious, though because the high risk of seizures in antihistamine overdose makes it hard to recommend FISO routinely. It can also cause AV block and asystole, which are bad, and it's absolutely contraindicated if you think the patient has a TCA overdose, since it may exacerbate this inherent cardiotoxicity. Now, there were some case reports of deaths in the 1980s in patients that got physostigmine. They were likely due to an overdose on a TCA. If the first dose is not effective, you can give a second about five to 10 minutes later, and that five to 10 minutes is the time during which you will see activity. Basically, you give physostigmine for the agitated patient who's cardiostable, who you wanna see if this improves their mental status. If you're going to use it, definitely get an EKG first. Consider two EKGs 30 minutes apart to make sure there's no QRS widening and consult a toxicologist. So if you have a patient with a diphenhydramine ingestion with a wide QRS, give them sodium bicarbonate, especially if they're not stable from a cardiac standpoint. Activated charcoal is probably reasonable if they've ingested less than 60 minutes and the patient is alert and cooperative. You need to make sure that they can prep their airway. Even if you're gonna drop an NG in the intubated patient, know that the likelihood that activated charcoal is going to significantly reduce the toxic load is uncertain. And finally, dialysis is not effective, so really most of your management will be supportive. 